Cheryl, just one thing on the confusion over the handling of some of the details, because I remember on Monday reporting for the BBC and thinking, my goodness, we're getting an awful lot of information coming out. You know, it's less than 24 hours, and we know this, 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 and this about what happened. And then actually... Uh, we don't know this, this, and this. I think this was a mistake on the part of the White House. Uh, you know, on Monday, as it became known that bin Laden had been killed, the White House came out and said uh, he went down in a firefight, suggestions that he was armed, that he has had used his wife as a human shield. All these things we found out on Tuesday were not accurate. Um, the White House says that this was as a result of lots of information coming in and conflicting accounts, and they were refining the story as they went along. But frankly, it made them look look a little bumbling. It was a little blot on what otherwise could have been a, a really victorious moment for them. And it's raised now some questions in the minds of some people about how bin Laden was treated. I uh, I think some, uh, very few probably, but some have suggested perhaps we should have just captured him if he was unarmed. And these are not the kinds of questions that a White House wants to face in this moment. And frankly, they could have been avoided had administration officials been a little bit more cautious on the first day and waited. Uh, yes, they have to satisfy the news beast and the media, but they probably should have said, look, we'll give you the details when we're really confident of them. Naftali, that may have been a little blip. I mean, you know, t in some respect, given the ma the magnitude of what had happened, I mean, it's a little bit of a storm in the teacup, yeah, looking at some so. of the details. But is the issue of photos and whether to release the photos of more significance, perhaps? Well, that's obviously a very controversial question. Uh, the president has decided not to release the photos because they're apparently fairly gruesome, and there's a fear that this will give radicals and terrorists something to rally around. You know, this is a guy that they really revered and looked up to, and here are a shot of him with, you know, his head blown away. I think there's a fear that that could really perhaps uh, stimulate some action that we'd all really regret. They also say that anybody who doesn't believe that Obama is dead isn't going to be convinced by photos. They'll just say, well, they were doctored or something like that. Interestingly, some Republicans have really backed up this decision. Speaker John Boehner yesterday said he completely supported the White House. Others have not. And so you had, um, for example, Senator Lindsey Graham saying we really should have released the photos just to avoid any uncertainty about whether he was really dead. My sense is there's a little bit of a subtext here, too, among some of the people who want to release the photos, which is they want to make it as vivid and in-your-face as possible, that if you mess with the United States, this is what you get, this is how you end up. So I think there's a little bit of that emotion behind the push to release the photos as well. The uh, Al Qaeda put out a statement uh, this morning or, or recently mm -hmm. that Bin Laden, in fact, is dead. So the question of whether he's Went dead or not. Went up on their not, website today. Yeah, has not uh, has been sort of taken care of. That um, I mean, there will always be doubters, of course. But um, one of the administration views was that um, to the extent there will be doubters, a picture won't solve that problem. People will think it's been doctored somehow, um, and that there will be future events like Al Qaeda's uh, announcement that Bin Laden is dead that will sort of close this and, and, and not require the releasing a photograph to prove that he was dead. I think uh, this, this is another point that we should make about the poll numbers that we were talking about earlier, because it's true that his poll numbers rocketed. I mean, they went from 46% approval in a New York Times CBS poll, which is not great mm -hmm. for an incumbent, to 57, which is really pretty good for an incumbent. And I do think it's likely, if history's any guy, that they'll go back down. But I think more important than the poll numbers is what this does to a certain narrative that the Republicans were building about President Obama heading into the 2012 election which is that he's weak, he's indecisive, he leads from behind, he's incapable of doing anything proactively. And I think even as the poll numbers go back down, he will have a good defense from here on out against that line of attack. And I think that's not an insignificant political development. Cheryl. I also think there's an important group of the electorate in which uh, this event, the killing of bin Laden, will really help Obama, and that is young people. Young people are not so concerned as their parents are with jobs and the economy and all of these other things, but for them, uh, for teenagers who are going to be able to vote in 2012, uh, September 11th was really a defining moment in their lives. And we saw the other night streams of people, kids coming out from George Washington University and other places to celebrate at the White House. And I do think that um, for some of those young people going to the polls, you know, late teens and 20-somethings, this is going to be very important. And this uh, this event will stick with them, and they were an important part of the uh, of his election in tw in 2008. And a, and a group that wasn't there during the midterm elections, of course. I was really That's struck right. by watching those young people, because I have a son who's 17 who actually found out about this before I did, mm -hmm. because he was on Facebook. And it came up on Facebook, and I, I think I was fast asleep actually at the time, then had to be woken up. But uh, watching some of those young kids and across the universities, many of them, it struck me, would have only been 
10, That's 11, right. when September the 11th struck. Certainly my 17-year-old son has almost no memory of that day. I mean, he was seven years old, and yet it still seemed to be a major event for him and a rallying My 16-year-old jumped up and down and said she would have gone down to the White House had she could, and my 12-year-old looked up the Obama speech on YouTube and watched it. And yep. that really showed me that kids are paying attention, and for them, this is an important moment.